I was like, Caleb, you have to get out of this dark room. You know, you, you got to, you know, he was just in a deep depression. Was it bad enough that you were concerned for just his life? I want to take you back to a moment. Uh, your last high school state meet, you become the youngest ever to go under 19 seconds in the 50 free. And then in the finals, you don't get another best time. How does the crowd react and how does that affect you? Oh goodness, yeah, I remember this. The first thing I heard was like, oh, like sighs of like, dang it. He didn't, he didn't go under 19 again. And that was the first taste of like, <laughs> screw you guys. Like I just went like 19-0 as a high schooler, but that was the first taste of like that expectation of, oh, you've done it once. He's going to do it again. And I just felt like a entertainment at that point. You would go through these instances, at least on occasion, where like you, you couldn't breathe. Yeah, they were panic attacks. Like describe what that feeling was like when you were in it. Yeah, I, I mean, it was hard to control. I was the number one recruit. All these colleges calling me, people wanting my time. So it was really difficult to swim in high school with all this new attention, this new spotlight and try to swim when you're having a panic attack. He was white as a ghost, slurring his speech and shaking. I thought, oh my God, he's having a heart attack. And he just kept saying, my heart, my heart, my heart. He was checked from head to toe. Neurologist, and then that's when they said it was anxiety. The pressure that society, that he put on himself and that society put him was just, he just was constantly going. And he was going from meat to meat and every expectation, well, what, what record can we break? The culmination of all that pressure, it just got to the point that he snapped. And you end up uh, like deciding to take six months off at some point th yeah. that year. What made you decide to do that? I needed a break. I needed a break from everything. I didn't have a plan. I didn't know if I was going to keep swimming after that. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, it was an extremely rough time. Didn't want to do anything. Wasn't going to school. Wasn't swimming. It was pretty much just laying in bed for all hours of the day for a couple months. He would stay in that room with the blinds closed and in the dark and would not go to practice, didn't want to eat, didn't want to go. I was like, Caleb, you have to get out of this dark room. You know, you, you got to, you know, he was just in a deep depression. He just didn't want to be around people. He didn't want, I think it was just a reminder of, great, I, I let this, this person down because I didn't get a world record or it was here. What was kind of the lowest point? Uh, yeah, that's definitely not something I want to get in today. I mean, I'm, I'm fully aware of what my lowest point was. It's not something I want to say on camera or something I don't know if I'll ever be ready to say. Was it bad enough that you were concerned for just his life? Um, I, I wasn't sure. Did I think deep down Caleb would be commit suicide? No, but I've had dear friends of mine that were in the swimming that their kids have, and it was because of pressure, and I knew how much pressure Caleb put on himself. So deep down, I thought, no, no, it can't be him. But I didn't, I didn't brush it off to where I was a blind mom. I thought, just in case, I wanna reach out to make sure that I'm getting the right people, from a counselor to the people at Clay High. What were the tools that you found successful for you that allowed you to get through it? Being patient and clinging on to the people I was comfortable talking with made me feel more human and made this situation feel like a much more manageable, manageable thing to, to cope with. Not every day was it my parents. A lot of it was Megan, my little sister, and Miss McCool. The kind of role she played in your life was I mean, I, I think the, the easiest way to sum it up is her, her nickname from not, for not only me, but multiple, a, a few of her students was Mama. She loved me for just being Caleb. It had nothing to do with swimming. She taught me how to be comfortable with myself, be proud of who I am, taking care of the person first, and then the swimming will take care of itself. Yeah, I had little sticky notes on his walls when um, he still lived at home that said swimming doesn't define me. At the same time, they were holding a scholarship spot for him at Florida. He's not swimming. He's not in the pool. And uh, Actually, I called Coach Troy. I didn't know if you need to you know, give, give a spot to somebody else. They held a spot for me the whole time and then were patient with me. I remember Troy, there's a quote from him. He said, we don't care if you don't swim till you get here. He goes, you take your time. There was points when I wanted to swim during this, but that's also what was causing some of what I was experiencing. So yeah, I just needed time. But I tell you what, when I did come out of that, when I was ready, it was awesome.
getting back in the water for the first time. Um, it just felt like I was getting baptized. In the months following Tokyo, your best friend uh, Ben said that it was hard for you. Um, in some sense, I think harder than the, the senior high school year. Um, how so? Yeah, it's brutal. I think the added attention, the uh, monumental moment in our, in our sport is the Olympic Games, an event that happens once every four years for a race that lasts. My longest race is lasting 49 seconds. My shortest is lasting 21 seconds. It was his senior year on steroids. Now we've taken the whole thing to a whole nother level. We're at the epitome of, of uh, certainly swimming, but maybe even the sports world in, in some dynamic, the Olympics. You go to trials and there's a building that is, the whole wall is Caleb. It's like, oh, no pressure here, Caleb. I think it wouldn't be as dominant as it was if Phelps was still kind of on the platform, right. but because there's no Phelps, it literally gets dumped on him. Even there he told me, you know, Dad, I couldn't, I couldn't eat and I couldn't poop for like three or four days. I mean, it's just crazy amount of pressure that these are kids. I just think the pressure built up. And then when it comes up, it just so happens that that certain point is when everyone wants to be in your business and ask, how is the game? It's just so many repeat questions. It was very hard to come back to life and fall into what we were used to in a time where every, everything had shifted. You know, we, had, we were receiving more spotlight than we ever had before. It wasn't just me under the microscope. It was very much me and Megan. I mean, we had interviews together. She met me in New York to do the media day after the games, which was brutal. Oh my gosh. I remember watching one of the highlights. I was like, I don't even remember saying that. <laughs> my body was there, but my mind was not in New York. Really what I wanted to do was just lock myself in a room and not talk to anybody. <laughs> but you have to capitalize from a you know, financial standpoint and a down the road standpoint. You can't just do that. You have to take advantage of these moments because I can't swim forever. Like, I want to try to take advantage of the moments that I do have of, in my prime years. I don't think I'm in my prime yet. I think I got a couple, couple more years before we start winding down here. The ISL, I think, was the biggest wrinkle. He was amped up after the Olympics, you know, and I, and I think he miscalculated. It was a six week um, swim thing. It was just coming off Olympics and he only got like one or two weeks just to get home and like decompress. There was a moment that we had, we were on the balcony of our hotel room and we just both got super emotional and the root of that was we need to stop making choices for our life based on what other people are trying to get out of us we're not a commodity we're, we're people and having that kind of aha moment was it really sh shifted things for us because we decided to, to go home early when he left that meet and didn't finish that, that section of the ISL, uh, I knew that it was, it was really hard for him. Maybe harder than ever before. We call him and he just broke down and started crying. And I was like, you're, you need a break, don't you? He goes, yeah, it's just too much, mom. What's the kind of headspace you're in? I need help with all this. Yeah, um, I, need to, I need to talk to people more. I need to just be honest. I, I felt so lost. I wanted to get away from the water, but then that's also one of my safe places. So it was, again, rock in a hard place. Um, yeah, it was, it was a pretty miserable couple months. We were like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is crazy. We have to, we have to learn. We have to learn how to, how to manage this and how to put ourselves first. It, it was impacting the relationship between the two but, of you. Between the two of us, yeah, because there was not any there was no hiding the emotion anymore. I never had doubts that we weren't gonna make it. So it, it took us some time to really be honest with ourselves and with each other about where we were at and what we needed moving forward. And so we started some counseling and therapy, which has been beautiful. It's been a tough first year, I think, for anyone's first year of marriage. You have to communicate no matter how dumb it sounds, no matter how stupid it is, just say something because it's going to turn into something bigger down the road. To so where are you now in the kind of post 
Tokyo press. I mean, we're, yeah, we're vibing now. I needed, I needed the time I took off. It was longer than I would have thought pre-Olympics. Um, I needed every little bit of those, I mean, we'll call it maybe two months. A little inside story, I straight up cried on Christmas just because I still hadn't had my footing too well back into training and feeling like my life was back in order. Sometime around January, late January, I was like, oh, I'm in shape. Like I'm hitting times in practice I hadn't hit before and I'm hitting numbers in the weight room where I haven't hit before. Um, so yeah, that, that was a good feeling too when I was like, yeah, I'm back. <laughs>